quite as I planned but anyway <sighs> what I was trying to do and hello everybody well, hello there welcome to all about the bass all about those with Standin Lee Standin uh, Lee Standin Lee uh, for the other Lee who's not very well today what I, what I was trying to do there yep. was was uh, demonstrate uh, some sort of Leo Fender bass invention timeline right um, and I'm <sighs> I think we achieved it, quite frankly. Do you? Yeah, yeah should we with, just, with some we just call it a day success. then? That's, that's the demo, is it? I think um, that's it. I think well, like, we can just retire Nathan, satisfied. Nathan and I were talking about the importance <laughs> of Leo Fender when it came to basses in, in our last video. Um, I'm really going, I think it's undisputed, really, that he, he is the single most important <coughs> pioneer uh, of the electric bass. Um, might not be your favourite bass ever, but I think um, as, as pioneers, I think he's, he's <coughs> yeah, the yeah, godfather. It, absolutely, yeah. So, so influential, just with the designs. There's all of those bases that I just attempted to play. Um, were design, designed by him. Designed right? by him. Him so and, and, and to a certain degree, George Fullerton as well. But mm. So the timeline goes, um, and we might as well have a little bit of an explore with each of these to sort of get some, some tones. So um, we are... You, oh, I've turned it off, it's fine. So we're using um, an... Aguilar, Aguilar, Aguilar. Are we, are we going for the uh, sort of South American pronunciation? I'm not even going to uh, bother because people are all writing. Oh, it's not like me. It's, like, like that. it's the Christine Aguilera uh, signature series bass head, the the AG seven hundred. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, AG stands for all good. Does it? No. Ultra low quality. Um, and we're going to leave all the settings the same for each one, which I totally understand is probably not necessarily... No, I think it's a good idea. We should definitely do that because yeah. it's important for everybody to see the difference in gain yes. as well. Yeah, but... Because uh, that, we... that's what I really noticed as we yeah. went through those bases at the start. 100%. Um, you know, the, the obviously the, the P bass and the, uh, the jazz bass are... Um, yeah. Uh, pa I don't know if that was passive, is it? They're, yeah, all, yeah. So, no, well, they're passive and were noticeably yes. a lot quieter than the other amps. So this is a P bass from the American Professional Series. Um, so it's a current 2018 model, but it's the it's a passive kind of definitely throwback to the original, like you know 1951. I think the P bass was introduced. Um, you can get deluxe active versions of this if if you want to, but this is this is the kind get of as it was meant to get be. Get ones with a little jazz pickup in as well. Yes, you can get specials and all. Anyway, so look, this uh, is your original. P bass, Pro probably the most famous bass of all time ever used by everyone uh, and his dog. Absolutely, I'm sure probably, probably the most recorded. Cat. You know, because yes. we, you know, me and Lee, the other Lee, um, sort of have been looking at various bass players. Occasionally, we sort of do sort of mm -hmm. sound alikey things, and um, we've been looking at you know all the guys, uh, um, uh, the, so all the classic guys, you know, and there's so many of them play P basses. Mm. It's, it really is noticeable, you know. Mm. I mean, I wonder up up till like the mid. 70s or whatever was there even was there even any other than the maybe the Rickenbacker 4003 was there even anything else to play you know I mean name the you know you think of all the modern classic bases yeah. like Music Man and Warwick and Spectre and mm. you know what they didn't they, didn't exist didn't exist for the first 20 years or so of, of the electric bass absolutely so, yeah. anyway so it was a P bass or a jazz bass or yeah uh, take your yeah. pick yeah uh, so here we go. Here are some tones. It's very easy to do tones on this because there aren't any. There's very few buttons to, to, to adjust. Yeah, there's not a lot to uh, to worry about here. Yeah, 
It's almost, to me, in comparison to the other bases. It sort of sounds like someone's talking a bit like this. Like this. It is. Uh, um, yeah, it is. But you know, that's kind. Of, that's the sound. That's the sound, isn't that it? Is it the is sound. the thuddy kind and it, of and sound. And it works, you know, in a lot of different mm. musical genres. You know, the police. I think always that sort of all the sting kind of bass lines where it is that kind of tone rolled off kind of just thuddy kind mm. of bass sound always sounds like that anyway not long after well quite a long time after i suppose if it's you know depending on if you're a guinea pig or something like that it'd be like three lifetimes later but as a human <laughs> about eight or nine years later um jazz was the thing Woo! um so you jazz. had all sorts of you know jazz masters and jaguars and of course bass players didn't get left out they got a jazz bass a jazz bass very sexy it is too Jazz. Much, much sexier. Jazz. Uh, jazz. Pete's more familiar with those kind of magazines than he is the genre of music. Yes, he is. Um, That's true. So now we have two pickups. Uh, two pickups. Two pickups. Count them. One, two. <laughs> uh, with uh, two volume controls and a tone control. Again, this is a, a modern American professional series bass, but harking back to the original sort of jazz bassy kind of vibe. So passive circuit. Same settings as the P bass. Sounds like this. sound it's a little bit brighter maybe than the p bass uh, a bit more no, definition oh yeah oh yeah what well, you've got a lot more tonal variations with this bass uh, that's for sure um so yes it's more defined uh, sonically but also with that back pickup it's giving you a lot uh, a real middly <laughs> classic sort of jacko sound mm -hmm. and then uh you know with the both pickers on together you get a, a kind of different sound in the p bass which is more of a funky mm -hmm. you're starting to get that sort of um sort of funk tone happening you know that kind of mm. that kind of snap which you never you never get with the p bass no sure yeah. so, so that, that's the jazz bass definitely a, definitely um, a step on I, I just feel like i want more you know, it's it's like <laughs> having now been sitting here with the benefit of some more modern bases with humbuckers and active circuits and stuff like that. I I am beginning to sort of I, I feel quite different than with the electric guitar. There's something about old fashioned -y kind of sounds that I find charming and that I like. Yeah. And I'm not really feeling that with the bass guitar. I mean, I know I'm not predominantly a bass player or even any dominantly a bass player but uh, you're a but, man and you have your man. opinion absolutely and you're and entitled I, to it I, I want more so let's um again without adjusting the settings on our amplifier let's jump over to we're going to fast forward now to the sort of the uh, mid 70s mid to late 70s oogie uh, oogie. and we're going to try a stingray where of course we're now seeing a humbucking pickup and an active uh circuit so Ooh. now there's no switches on here to do anything but we've got a three band eq yep. and each eq position is on its sort of center detente so we have a cut and a boost in that case that's what uh that what that's what uh that's, that's, that's what that but we, again I can't here we go things on there 
uh, you know, bangs of different sounds, and a very uh, much more uh, trebly, a bright sort of sound going on. Even Absolutely. though you've only got the one pickup. Absolutely. So you can see, uh, you know, in the in the sort of 15, 17 odd years that, that Leo had from doing the jazz bass through to this, quite a lot of things have changed. Bigger body style, humbucking pickups, active circuit. Active circuit, most importantly, um, this is this is the big change we're seeing. Yeah, uh, different neck join. The bridge I still think is, if I had to be honest with you, it, it's, it's, it's transitioning from a sort of a Fender style bent bit of metal bridge over to what uh, ultimately, Leo put on the GNL bases, which was the much higher mass kind of bridge. Um, but let's give the other. So obviously, and then we also begin to get into the realms of the two pickup uh, Stingray, which is very, very cool. Oof. Your stand is behind you, but I'll I'll hold on to this lovely creature. Uh, these wouldn't have had baked maple necks back in the day. That's a relatively new thing for Ernie Ball. So they'd have had more traditional, lighter coloured uh, maple necks. Um, I've always loved the Music Man headstock design of the three one side and the uh, one the other side. I think it gives, you know, same on the guitars. I like the, the sort of four one side, the two the other. It's a very neat headstock design, um, which I believe Music Man patented uh, and is why, um, or Did trademarked they? or patented, whichever you do, which is why you don't see any other brand of guitar doing the same thing. Are you serious? Yeah, I am serious. Well, I never... You can't be serious. You can't be serious. Now, on here, we now have a blade to switch between the pickups. Uh, do, 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 do. So, the a pickup selector. Knobs Obviously are the same, aren't they? they? Knobs are the same, volume, and then your three band EQ. You're on the centre detente of them all. Yes, 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 I am. Here we go then. Right. Back pickup starting with. Mm hmm. So, very That's similar sound very, to that. Yes, the pickup positioning is identical. Almost identical? Yeah. It's identical, isn't okay. it? Yeah. So we've got a fat front pickup then, which sounds more like this. switch or a three-way that five. Oh, it so you've is. obviously got some more of your kind of series parallel or coil tappy kind of things going on yeah coil tappy carpets if you live in the uk just fitted uh, some flooring at my house did a pretty okay job just saying thanks tappy. <laughs> <laughs> bit of a discount was there involved yeah. no maybe there will be on the next one though no. i have no idea coil tappy carpets <laughs> well they're tappy carpets oh and tappy I, carpets right I and i just thought anyway shameless no idea shameless right yeah. any excuse for a discount on anything so obviously this is this is for i guess anybody that's playing funk yes. this is a nice funky bass sound you know what I, mean? I just think everything's better about, about this I like the fatness of the humbucking pickup. Well, it's, it's just more options. It, 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 we'll be seeing more and more tonal options. You yeah. see, that the, the big the game changer was the active preamp. Yeah. And this is really important in basses as opposed to guitars because it just gives you so many more tonal variations. I, I, I also I'm just seeing the uh, the the um, evolution of the of the of the neck join. You know, four bolts on a Fender. Five on a music man. Four about on a Fender. Six on a GNL. Had Leo lived longer, perhaps we'd have seen, you know, maybe you know, seven. seven, eight bolts. Who, who, who knows? knows? Or who knows? His, his imagination was unlimited on the bolt front. <laughs> on the bolt front, he had a bolt obsession. <laughs> it's <Yes>. like <laughs> he was a, he was uh, UK born. Actually. He was from Bolton. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. That's actually quite good. That's all right, isn't it? <laughs> You can have that one. <laughs> so um, anyway, are we moving on? Please. Right, so there's not much of a gap now between the Stingray, uh, timeline-wise, between the Stingray and the first uh, GNL L1000. Uh, probably not more than four or five years. So let's go to the single pickup. Uh, let's mute you here. Just out of interest, mm. you might be able to furnish me with this information. So this one and the other one, did they come out at the same time? I believe they did. I believe it was 1981 
I believe. So the two pickup version came out at the same time? I think so. Okay. I think it, they were launched as a, here's the L1000, here's the L2000. Okay. Um, and you want to look at this one? And I believe there are five, again, there are five string versions of all the, you know, you can get five string Fenders, five string GNLs, five string Stingrays. But now we're just you using can. four strings. Not in those days. No, absolutely not. When did the five string thing, was that an 80s thing, do you think? Five string bass guitars? It was, Phone somebody you. put that on that yeah. thing. Well, well, I don't know. Does he use a five string or a four string? He doesn't actually. He is f uh, predominantly 99.9% .9 of the time four string. Four string. Yes. Fair enough. Yeah, it's not a five string fan. Mm, interesting. Does he, use them, uh, he has used them occasionally, but generally four. Generally I think four. it's all to do with the uh, getting in the way. Yeah, no Probably. worries. Okay, well, look, let's jump over to the to the, the GNL uh, now, please. Yes. Uh, so we're actually jumping <clears throat> uh, back slightly in the sense of this, although it's got the humbucking pickup and some interesting switching options, it doesn't have the active preamp in it so oh thank you sir for Don't being very it's kind all, it's all right. noticeable how much presence an active circuit adds in straight away. Well, I, I've got an idea, right? I think what Leo was trying to do um, was basically, because if you sound the, these come out at the same time, let's, mm. can you just pass me the other one? But, yeah. So this is, this, is the, this is the other model he came out with. So I think he was basically trying to do, right, if you like P basses, this is, for you, this is what you want. It's passive. It's yeah. got one pickup. Yeah. Uh, but if you want something all sexy and active, and that, it's going to be this one, isn't it? I rather like the fact that the active circuitry is switchable on this. Because it, definitely, definitely, if you are the kind of bass player that's sitting there going, well, you know, active's great for certain things, but passive's good for certain things as well. Yes. Um, well, you see, like Sire, for instance, like have taken idea. that on board because yeah. all their basses have that too. Right, you passive can switch them switching. off. Yeah. Cool. Well, look, let's just crack on with a bit more uh, noodling on no, that. I've finished with that. That's done. Well, that's what that didn't sounds get like. a lot of time in the sun, did it? No, there we go. Uh, yeah, but this is the whole point, you see, because I think that that was just really a nod to the, the more traditional bass more traditional bass I think, really, what he was into was this. Do you? Yeah, because this is much hipper. Got the active. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's got the pokiest... Yeah. tone of them all hasn't it absolutely so, yeah it's got lots of uh, are you got, can I tempt you to come and have a little uh, fiddle about if you must come on Undisputably, if you want the most different tonal variations from your bass guitar, you can kind of see where Leo's going with this. Yeah. I, I wonder if that's just like, right, how do I make a bass? Well, of course, as, as does we've already, everything. We've already uh, know that he's an innovator. Uh, yeah. and, a, and a pioneer, you know. That's why I don't think his main focus was that sort yeah. of passive thing. It was definitely, this is where he was headed. Do you think that is, you know, I, I think you're right. I think you're, the, the L1000 is the nod back to just, look, it's just a humbucker fat version of an old bass. Yeah. And, and the 2000 was the, if you need something that's going to, you can turn up to a gig and do anything with. Yeah. Um, the 2000. But I've got to say, you know, visually speaking, uh visually speaking i'm i'm i think there's a lot to be said for the more you see something the more you sort of fall in love with it because you know the, the p bass and the, and the jazz bass i think visually aesthetically there's there's nothing to not like about them so uh, it's funny though you say that because i've got the same thing and i was because i always wanted a, a jazz bass shaped mm. bass and i didn't have one until recently the mm -hmm. first one i've ever had i just got recently and it's funny, I sort of see pictures of myself with it, and I think, oh, that doesn't, that's really? weird. But you've got absolutely no taste in bass styles at no. all, because you play a headless status. It's not headless. I mean, it's the it's worst head looking bass I've ever seen. 
<laughs> I'm not, listen, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that when I looked at myself playing a jazz band, it looked weird just because I've never done it. And it looked odd on me. But, and I, I do believe, and I think it's a lot to do with the, the um, what do you call it when something's the same on both toilet sides? The, the, I, the, 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 the toilet seat. It's, well, now you've said it, I can't unsee it, which is a shame because <laughs> I was really liking this. But now you've said it. Symmetrical. Like, symmetrical. Yeah. I think there's a lot to be said for the symmetrical scratch plate. Mate, I really like the look of the Stingray. But equally, I can't help thinking, do I like the look of it because I've seen so many cool bass players of using course, it? Of course, that's the thing, isn't it? You it's know, a, it's it just is a classic look, as yeah, is the jazz that's, bow. Yeah. Absolutely classic look. Mm. It's beautiful. I love the, yeah. the jazz bow shape. He got it so right with yeah. it. It's great. And, and I think if there's going to be a negative about the GNL, it, it will simply be, it is, it is has. I think it has the least visual signature. You know, it's like, oh, oh, if, if, I, if I did that, and you were on stage with it like that, I think nine out of 10 people would just go, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Whereas clearly with either of these, you, yeah. you don't need to see. But that might just be because it never it never had the sort of the, the exposure or the popularity of these. I think that's very much, very much the case. Hey. Um, there you go. Little roundup of the history of basses that Leo Fender invented over the, you know, during his life. And what a clever man sounded. he was. Huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, worth every penny of the millions and millions and millions of pounds that he made out of it. Yeah, I suspect. and lost, probably. And then made again, and lost. Said, speaking of lost, the, the, when CBS sold Fender in 1980-something yeah. or other, they sold it for less than they bought it from Leo. Really? And not not just taking into account inflation. I mean, physically less. Wow. So yeah, they, they, they obviously. Uh, How much later was that? Did they sell it? I want to say 1985, but it might have been a year or two before that. But it, it was mid. Because people always talk about pre-CBS vendors, don't they? So that's that's pre, that's pre uh, 65. He sold it then. He sold 65? it in 65. Yeah. Whoa. Sold Fender in 65. Non-compete clause. So actually stayed on at Fender for a bit. Mm. Uh, stayed on at Fender for I think for five years. But he was saying um, he was coming up with all these innovative designs, and Fender weren't interested. They just wanted to, you know, make the old stuff. Sure. So he was more and more marginalised until eventually he left. Uh, and then he started the CLF research thing. Worked with Music Man. Then did his own thing with GNL. Brilliant. Well, what a genius. That's it. There we are. Thank you very much, Nathan. That was uh, informative. It was very informative. Um, I've, I've learned a lot here today. Yes, and I thank you for that. Yes. Well, if nothing else, uh, I do know a bit about guitars. You I can't play. Do. Uh, but oh, I do. Uh, well, you shouldn't. You do yourself a disservice. Sir. Well, that's very kind of you. Right. Uh, this has been all about the bass. Yes. I hope you've enjoyed this. And Thanks it's been for tuning informative. in. And if you've got yes. any of it wrong, then it's his fault. Yeah, absolutely. Do and subscribe. This is a weekly show, uh, normally with a, a, a better uh, co presenter than myself. No, it's always me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, first. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thanks very much. Bye bye now. <laughs> right, good. Okay.